In this video, we're going to use this model to take a quick tour of the brain, identifying its major parts and discuss its functions. So let's get started. Instead of thinking about the brain as this one singular mass, we can divide it into three major parts, starting with the largest part, which is what we call the cerebrum. This is typically what we think about when we visualize the brain. It's got this outer wrinkled cortex. We can divide the cerebrum into two hemispheres or four lobes, and it's really the major processing center of the brain. It controls everything from language to voluntary movement, emotions, and takes information from the body to process. Sitting right underneath the cerebrum in the back of the head is what we refer to as the cerebellum, which is Latin for little brain because it actually looks like we have two little cerebrums. And the cerebellum controls everything from balance to coordination to posture to fine motor skills. And lastly, the third major part sits underneath the brain is what we refer to as the brainstem. And the brainstem serves two functions. It connects the spinal cord to the body, right? So information is traveling to and from the brain via the brainstem. Um, and it also controls automatic functions, things like heartbeat, breathing, and blood pressure, things that we're not necessarily consciously aware of. So we have the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. We can also view these major structures through a cross section. Imagine cutting the brain in half. So we have the cerebrum, which sits on top of the brain, right? The largest structure. We have our cerebellum, which sits in the back of the brain and our eyeballs would be up here. And of course the brainstem, right? Which controls automatic functions like breathing and also takes information uh, to the brain and away from the brain. And what I like about this view as well is you can make up individual parts. So we have the thalamus, this is kind of the relay center. Um, we have the hypothalamus, which regulates our endocrine system and hormones and our sleep-wake cycle, and our pituitary gland, which is considered the master gland. And with the brainstem, we can make out our pons, right, this bulge right here. And this other one, which we call the medulla oblongata. So here we have our three major parts. Now there's other three kind of sections people talk about as well. You might have heard the expression the hindbrain. Um, the hindbrain is anything below my tool, the brainstem and cerebellum. I like to think about the hindbrain as our reptilian brain. Our forebrain, which is everything in the upper region, similar to the cere cerebrum. And then we have is the midbrain, which sits on top of the brainstem. So we can think about the brain as the cerebrum, brainstem, and cerebellum. We can all think about it as the hindbrain, the midbrain, and the forebrain. So there's kind of a nice overview of these structures. Now, if we take the brain and turn it on this angle, there's two things that really stand out to me. One is that we can divide the brain into two hemispheres. And I'll actually turn it this way because this would be our eyes up here. And we typically think about the brain in terms of two halves. We have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. You might've heard the expression, oh, this person is left-brained and this person is right-brained. And that's kind of an old antiquated view of the brain. Like, like, yes, there are functions that are primarily located on one hemisphere. So for example, language is primarily regulated to our left hemisphere. But typically we think about the brain and hemispheres working together. We also have this long groove that separates the left and right hemisphere. This is called the longitudinal fissure. And fissure is typically a, a word used for these kind of deep, deep crevices within the brain. Now, here's a bonus question. Can you identify the structure that connects both hemispheres together, the band of fibers that makes uh, communication between, hemis between both hemispheres possible? Well, that would be what we call the corpus callosum, which would be number eight. This is what's gonna connect both hemispheres together. And if you cut the structure, that's what will lead to what we call split brain patients. All right, so there we go. We have two hemispheres. The other thing that stands out to me is just how wrinkled the brain is. And the reason the brain is wrinkled is because it adds more surface area. We can't get a bigger skull, so the brain kind of folds in on itself to add more surface area. Now what's interesting about these wrinkles is that they actually have names. So you see these little crevices here, these little valleys? This is what we call sulci or sulcus. Sulci for plural and sulcus because we have one. And then if the grooves are sulci, what are the little bumps called? Well, the bumps are called gyrus or gyri. Gyri for plural and gyrus for singular. So once again, we have these crevices right here, which we call the sulci, and then the bumps right next to it are the gyrus, so sulcus and gyrus. Now, these grooves and crevices matter. What they actually do is they form boundaries or barriers between the brain. So let's take a look at these boundaries, which will help us identify a few of the brain's lobes on the cortex. 
Um, one of the major ones right here, this is a group, is called the central sulcus. And my tool, you know, is kind of is showcasing that central sulcus. And why this sulcus is so important is that it divides the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. And that's what this sulcus does. And the sulcus travels um, all across the brain here, which divides the frontal from the parietal lobe. Our frontal lobe controls everything from um, cognitive processes like decision making and problem solving um, and impulse control. And our parietal lobe primarily receives information from the body, like um, hot and cold. If I touch something spiky or smooth, that's going to take um, that information as well. And if we kind of think about the central sulcus as well, there's a gyrus right in front. Okay, here's a gyrus. This is called the primary motor gyrus. This is going to send information to my muscles, right, via the spinal cord, okay? And then right behind the central sulcus is the primary um, somatosensory cortex, which receives information from the body. Hot, cold, spiky, smooth, right, information from my hands and my skin. So once again, we have our central sulcus, which divides the frontal and parietal. We have our motor cortex, which is on this gyrus, and the primary um, somatosensory cortex, which sits on this gyrus. Now we also have a really deep sulcus, right? This one right here, okay? Do you know what this one's called? This one's called the lateral sulcus, okay? And this actually looks like a thumb, right? Kind of looks like a thumb. So you could take the brain with you wherever you would like. And the thumb would be my temporal lobe. So this sulcus divides the temporal lobe from the frontal and parietal lobe. And my temporal lobe plays a role primarily in audio information, so it takes information in from my ears. And if I peel apart my temporal lobe, um, you would see the hippocampus, which processes memories, um, and my amygdala deep inside for emotions. So my temporal lobe plays a big role. And remember, we have two hemispheres, which means we have two temporal lobes, right? We have temporal lobe here and a temporal lobe here, which also means we have two frontal lobes, this side and this side. Just remember, because we have two hemispheres, we have um, two lobes on each side. Now, even though there isn't a big divider, in the back of the brain, sitting right above the cerebellum, is our occipital lobe. Do we know what our occipital lobe does? This takes information from our eyes. So this helps us see the world and process information um, from our eyes. That would be the occipital lobe. And that is our quick tour of the brain.